Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video. So today we're talking all things bloating. Bloating is not normal. It is not something that you should just have to put up with and yeah, kind of go back to your day-to-day -day life experiencing. It's definitely your body giving you a sign that something isn't quite right. And today we're gonna to be digging deeper into that. So in today's video, we're going to be covering the common causes of bloating, how to find out what the root cause of your bloating is, and then I've got lots of tips to share on how to relieve bloating. Don't forget to click the subscribe button if you haven't already, if you enjoy watching content like this. And also, if you do find this video, please do remember to give it a thumbs up to let me know. Um, and also, it really does help to support my channel. So firstly, we're gonna talk about what are the common causes of bloating. So I'm gonna put them on the screen next to me right now. But some of these include food allergies, intolerances, um, hormonal imbalances, definitely if you're you know, maybe getting bloating leading up to your period. It could be digestive issues such as lack of digestive enzymes or potentially low stomach acid um, constipation is a really common one for bloating you've also got the possibility of a gut microbiome imbalance which is called dysbiosis so we can see that in both the large intestine and the small intestine um, the abbreviation for small intestine you may have heard of it is SIBO so small intestinal bacterial overgrowth that can also cause a bit of bloating um, not even just a bit it could potentially cause a lot of bloating in someone. We've also got other things like stress and anxiety and emotions. There's a huge gut brain connection and something um, recently that I learned which I thought was fascinating. Apparently when our bodies are under a large amount of stress our intestines are actually the first organ to lose its blood supply, which I thought was absolutely fascinating. So if you are under a, you know, a large amount of stress for a prolonged amount of time, that could mean that you are getting a reduced blood supply, supply to your intestines, which definitely can have a, you know, an impact on your gut lining function, which long-term, you know, that can increase gut permeability, which is also known as leaky gut, and a whole host of concerns down there in the gut. So yeah, there's a huge, huge link with stress and our gut health and also you may want to check your medications or supplements and think you know when did the bloating start is there anything new you've changed there because um, sometimes they can also be an underlying cause of bloating as well so there's some of the most common causes I tend to see of bloating this is definitely not an exhausted list so now let's move on to well how do I figure out what is the root cause of my bloating? Like that is such a big list of things and of course not all of those things are gonna affect everyone. So you've got to figure out which one is relevant to you. So tip number one is definitely you've got to track the bloating. If you've not done this yet, this is this is what you need to do. The first thing you wanna track is definitely your food, just to check there isn't any sensitivities, anything that you're potentially eating in your diet which is just triggering this bloating response. The next thing you wanna track is definitely your menstrual cycle. So it is common for women to experience bloating Bloating, particularly leading up to their periods. Now, hormone imbalances can really differ between woman to woman, but one thing I do see quite common with bloating, particularly if you're getting it leading up to your period, is sometimes that can indicate an issue with estrogen and progesterone, and most of the time it means estrogen is high and progesterone is low. So you want to work on that balance. Um, I do actually have a recent video about how to raise progesterone, so maybe some of the tips in that video might be really beneficial for you. So it's definitely worth ago and I'll leave that video linked down below if you want to go check it out um, but I would definitely say start tracking your menstrual cycle see when the bloating is coming up um, because then that can may give you a bit of an idea of which hormones um, are at play at that time of the month and um, you know which ones are more dominant um, and that can kind of give you a bit of a starting point point. and then the third thing that I would definitely track is your emotions so when you are experiencing the bloating check in with yourself you know think am I under a lot of stress at the moment are you experiencing anxiety if you've got any worries and you may see a correlation with uh, actually when I've got more anxiety my bloating is worse and you can start to draw those connections. The second thing I would also do is start asking yourself the question of when is the bloating coming up like is it coming up after eating or are you just getting it throughout the whole day randomly or do you wake up with bloating this kind of information can also give you a little bit of a guide of where to look. So for example, if you're getting 
bloating after meals, then that would indicate more to me either digestion issue or potentially there is a food sensitivity that is triggering the bloating. So that's where I would start looking first. Say, for example, you're waking up with bloating, you're getting it really randomly in the day. This is where I want to do a much deeper investigation. So you may want to um, consider doing a stool test. So that's actually one of my next tips um, is getting a good it, like in-depth stool test done. I like to get mine done in the UK by in vivo. I use them with my clients all the time. Um, other people like to do like the GI map. Um, there are other tests which can be fantastic, but you want a really nice comprehensive stool test. These tests will be checking things like your microbiome diversity, which can give you so much information, particularly if you can take those results to a practitioner and you know get them to help put a protocol together for you like these tests honestly are like a gold mine of information and yet yeah, you may have an imbalance of particular bacteria strains and that can be really the root cause of the bloating um other things as well that these um gut tests like these stool tests check for is things like parasites and um, they can look at the overall inflammation load they can see if there's some gut permeability so something called leaky gut um, which could be maybe triggering that bloating response and through these in-depth tests you could actually start to rule out certain conditions like for example SIBO. The next thing I would ask yourself is when did the bloating start? It's very easy for us just to focus on the present moment but actually thinking back in time and going back to when the symptoms first came up can actually give you a lot of information potentially to what is going on. So think back to when it started. Did you start any new medications, any new supplements? Did you make any dietary changes? Did anything happen in your life around that time? Any stressful events? That might give you a little bit of a light bulb moment. Okay, the next thing on my checklist to try and figure out where the bloating is coming from is your bowel habits. So you really wanna ask yourself, are you going to the toilet daily? If the answer is no, this is what you need to focus on. Um, constipation is one of the most common causes of bloating and it is definitely something which you want to address straight away not only from the bloating point of view but also constipation can cause a whole host of other issues from hormonal imbalances absorption issues skin concerns and yeah it is one of our main detoxification pathways we want to make sure it's working optimally i do actually have a whole video um again it's quite a recent video on constipation and my tips to relieve it so i will leave that video link down below okay so there's some starting point for you to start thinking about to be your own little detective to see if you can try and pinpoint where the bloating is coming from however I do want to stress if you've asked yourself all these questions and you are still completely lost and your bloating isn't getting any better and it's been more long term please please do go and seek that help um, you can either go see a practitioner like myself who can guide you through the process and help you find that root cause um, or at the very least go to your doctor and make them aware of it and maybe they might run some tests just to start ruling out anything um you know any any potential underlying conditions okay so let's get to the tips so this is always a part of the video that everyone is kind of probably skipping to number one is of course the experimenting with the foods so keep your food diary and then you want to start experimenting um and maybe taking something out that you think may be a potential trigger and do things one at a time as well. Don't just make a load of changes all at once because you really wanna be able to monitor and track your progress. If it's helping, when it comes to bloating, you should know a difference very, very quickly. So yeah, do things one at a time, but definitely start experimenting with your food diary and the food you're eating. Number two is correct any hormonal imbalances. So this can be a bit tricky, um, but I would say start with that estrogen and progesterone balance, definitely. So like I said, I'll leave that video link down below. Also, when it comes to any kind of hormonal hormone imbalance you really want to make sure your liver is being supported as much as possible so I'll also leave my video down below on how to support your liver health this is an area where it's very unique to the individual so I do recommend if it is a possibility to go see a practitioner who can really help to pinpoint what those imbalances are and support you and get everything you know back into balance basically um so yeah definitely go see a practitioner um or come see myself I do work with clients one-to-one -one and I'll leave all my information in the description box below um, and I do also offer free discovery calls as well if you are interested in working with me. Tip number three is you've got to address that constipation as I've already said so yeah I'll leave that video down below and you can go check out all my tips to relieve constipation. Tip number four let's talk about your digestive ability so something I mentioned at the beginning of the video is having a lack of digestive enzymes or poor stomach acid can contribute to bloating so some little tips that you can do 
to support this area is number one, add bitter greens to your food. So um, things like rocket, um, watercress, I'll put a list of them on the screen right now. If you take a small handful and add these to your meals, that bitter taste helps to stimulate the digestive enzymes um, and that's gonna help you better break down your food. And if you find that adding the bitter greens to your meals does help you, then that's gonna give you a bit of a, you know, a little bit of a direction that supporting your digestive enzymes even further may be even more beneficial. So you may wanna consider maybe supplementing. Um, I'll leave some of my favorite digestive enzyme supplements in the description box. The other thing you could also do um, from a stomach acid point of view is particularly with bloating, some people find having a little bit of apple cider vinegar um, in some water before their meal, about half an hour before your meal, um, can be beneficial and can help relieve that bloating because the apple cider vinegar helps to actually balance the stomach acid. Um, so that means it's going to support your um, ability to break down the foods, particularly protein. That's a real key one there with the stomach acid. The next tip, kind of keeping on the liquid side, is definitely keep your liquids away from meals. So the apple cider vinegar, that's half an hour before you eat. Um, and yet yeah, just in general, I would say try and keep your liquids like at least 20 minutes either side of your meal. You can sip on a little bit of water, fine, but don't be like chugging lots of liquids when you're trying to eat your meal because basically the more liquids you have that actually can dilute the digestive enzymes and as I've already discussed the lack of digestive enzymes can be the thing that's causing the bloating. Okay the next thing that you can try is to support the gut microbiome and correct that dysbiosis. So dysbiosis is the imbalance of the gut bacteria. So the very popular route here is probiotics. I will just say as a little note on this though if you do try some probiotics and you find that your bloating is worse or your digestive symptoms become worse, that may indicate that potentially SIBO might be present, so that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, because sometimes probiotics can actually irritate SIBO. So if that does happen to you, my advice would, go, be, would be go straight to your doctor um, and ask them if they can screen you for SIBO. If they do say no, you can do it privately, um, but I would definitely say try it with your doctor first. So probiotics that I really like, I really love the brand in vivo in general, and um, they're definitely more UK based. I know you can definitely get them Planet Organic. If you work through a practitioner, they can get you in vivo supplements um, much, much easier. But another more accessible brand, which I do like, is OptiBac. Um, you can find them in many different places, many different countries as well. They may even be worldwide, but I know they're very accessible. Um, my go-to with OptiBac is the Everyday Extra Probiotic. Now, although it's very easy for us just to go straight to the supplements, we also do have our probiotic-rich foods. Also, maybe try including these more in the diet these could definitely help with your gut health and then also on the flip side to the probiotics we also want to make sure we're supporting our prebiotics so probiotics add beneficial bacteria and prebiotics feed beneficial bacteria okay the next thing I want to touch on is some teas that you can try so some of the digestion focused teas are things like fennel Fennel can be fantastic, so definitely have it kind of after a meal. So wait about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then have a cup of fennel tea. That could be really beneficial. Um, dandelion is also a great one. Peppermint is great. Peppermint is an anti-spasmotic, which means that you know if you get um, like cramping or if, if you do have IBS, for example, peppermint could be good because it helps to relax. The, um, the gut, basically, or well, the intestines to be more, <laughs> to be more specific. Uh, why well, can't I speak? To be more specific. And then also another tea that I like is ginger. Again, ginger helps to relax the intestines, but also it's very anti-inflammatory as well. Let's move more now into the direction of the stress and the emotion. So the next tip is definitely focus on your mental health. Um, this should always be a number one priority. Um, it is always play some part in any healing journey. And in the case of bloating, it can actually be the thing that's causing the bloating. So definitely think about your stress load, think about you know your emotions day to day if you're suffering with anxiety, and think, is there anything within your life that you can maybe tweak slightly? This is gonna help reduce that load. Um, or if this is something that you know is a big 
concern for you maybe think about reaching out to get that help um and you know speak to someone about it just make sure you're making this a priority and not just pushing your emotions down to the side the next tip also kind of coming off the back of that is that when you are eating try and eat in a, in a relaxed environment if we are you know watching tv or doing something while we're eating or um i don't know we're just generally very stressed before sitting down to eat that can really shut down the digestive system and reduce our digestive abilities and that can be worsening the bloating so we want to make sure we are in a relaxed state if you do struggle with stress something i give you as a tip to my clients is i say before you start eating just two minutes or even a minute just do a couple of deep breaths um, so I like to do the, the um, box breathing exercise where you breathe in for six counts, hold for six counts, breathe out for six counts, hold for six counts and repeat. You can change the counts um, to what fits you. But doing that helps to reset the vagus nerve. And yeah, that is going to really help with your digestive abilities um, and just really help keep you a bit more of a calm state. Okay, and then a couple more lifestyle tips is definitely get moving. Our body is very clever and things do kind of push on each other, you know, internally. So for example, even breathing, when we breathe and we focus on deep breaths, our diaphragm actually massages along the, um, the colon there. So that's helping with a bowel movement and also helping with the digestive ability of the gut. So there's lots of things internally which are just you know, kind of pushing on each other. And overall, it's all about that motility. So if you're just sitting down all day and not really moving, then yeah, that is going to weaken that motility. It could you play you know a role with constant patient and overall it can just definitely be something which can worsen bloating okay and then my next tip this is particularly good if you have actually got active bloating and you need something just to help um, yeah, kind of relieve it immediately is abdominal massage. So years ago, before I corrected my imbalances and healed my body, um, bloating was one of my symptoms I used to get all the time. And abdominal massage was definitely one of the most effective um, things for me. I found it really did help and it really worked. So there's a couple ways you can do it. It's either obviously with your hands, you just wanna go in gentle circular motions in the um, direction of your colon. So you're going clockwise wise around your stomach kind of just get the movement going on around the stomach i mean just getting any kind of massage there and you can start to like push and if you start to feel a bit of tenderness you can work a little bit more in that area and it does help to release a bit of the gas if there is built up air inside um but yeah and also from like a, a constipation point of view massage can be really effective trying to again get that motility and help push the stool around okay so something that which i haven't mentioned on this list so far is supplements and the reason why is because there is not a one thing fits all in terms of supplements and bloating. You have to find out what that root cause is. I think the only supplement which I've said really today, which um, is worth a go, would be a probiotic. Um, but besides that, if you want to start taking supplements for bloating, then this is again something which I recommend doing with assisted help. So to go see a practitioner like myself or anyone who does work in kind of more of a naturopathic setting and works with supplements, um, they can help bespoke a supplement plan to you and what your imbalances are so I think that's really important because otherwise you know as I say going back to the common causes if you start going out and buying a load of supplements um, that they could be the wrong ones and that could actually make the bloating worse I do just want to end off this video by saying if you try these tips and you're still suffering with bloating please do go get that help go see your doctor or go see a practitioner um, because like I said going back to the very start of this video bloating is not normal and it's not something that you should have to put up with so yeah we want to find out what that root cause is for you if you haven't already make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content from me and yeah i hope you guys are doing really well i love you so much and i'll see you in my next video Mwah. bye mm -hmm.